Hello everyone. We are going to start our last presentation for the Unit 3 and indeed the last presentation for our lecture for the semester. This will conclude all of our lecture and you'll be preparing now for your final exams and last quizzes and projects. So we discussed briefly already populations affected by mental health when I lectured last week. We discussed how you can tell if someone has a mental illness and this will not take very long for me to go through this presentation and touch on some highlights. Always course, you need to complete your enabling objectives and to think about things that we discussed in class so that you're prepared for quizzes and to work effectively in the community. As I thought about community health nursing and your um, mental health clinical rotation, I realized that you've already had a large component of what you will need in your mental health class with uh, Mrs. Bimbo. Uh, that class also sends the students into community-based settings where they are caring for those with mental illness. And I know you all also may have gone to Forsyth Medical Center, second floor, or perhaps um, Old Vineyard or, or Baptist Hospital. But indeed, the knowledge that we're talking about in this unit, you've already had in an entire class which will be why this will not require much because you've had a whole class on the mentally ill. Your enabling objective number one talks about uh, the basic definition of mental illness or mental health and it is easy to understand that mental health is the state of um, well-being and someone performing and operating well mentally and then mental illness of course is when there's a disorder of some type of um, problem happening with someone's illness. I mentioned in class that we know someone has a mental illness based on the way they act, think, or feel. And I've used the example oftentimes that seeing someone in the middle of the summer when it may be 100 degrees outside with a coat, a hat, a scarf, gloves on, gives us an indication that they may be suffering with a mental illness and is not the brunt of the joke of those who may be riding by but actually you're seeing that the way that this person is acting by dressing inappropriately is a good indication they be they are suffering with the mental illness. Um, Enabling objective number two is asking you about the changes and things that are occurring with mental illness. We know over time we have gone from the age of confinement where they felt like everyone with a mental illness needed to be institutionalized somehow or another and that they should be put away and not be a burden on society and just left to the care of those who have decided that they will commit their careers to care for the mentally ill. We understand now in 2014 that that was not one of the best ways to handle those with mental illness. We saw the closing of major uh, mental health institutions like Dorothea Dix. We saw uh, horrible conditions that were existing for those who were trying to be cared for by a very uh, small select few of professionals in a in a, a institutionalized setting and so we needed to come up with a better way to care for those who may have a mental illness of course depending on the degree of the mental illness Things that affect the influence mental illness, you all are already very familiar with this from your mental health class. Of course, it's genetic factors, uh, uh, things that may just be organically occurring in the brain, 
structural abnormalities in the brain and then you have the social factors that have been around from the beginning of times with social rejection we've already discussed domestic violence that occurs with the vulnerable populations that certainly affects someone's mental health uh, social isolation poverty uh, bullying that is occurring a lot now and at least a lot of focus is a, is being put on bullying and let me restate bullying has been occurring for many 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 years but we are as a society making a larger focus on bullying as it is thought that the bullying that has been occurring over the last 10 to 15 years is much more detrimental than bullying as they would describe it that occurred maybe 30 to 40 years we know that natural and man-made disasters can affect mental illness we talked about that already in that unit and that is where we know we see the post-traumatic stress disorder uh we may see some traumatic brain injury that may also be occurring we've discussed previously that our veterans are going to be those who also are going to be high probability of having some of the post-traumatic stress disorders or um, traumatic brain injuries also. We think about the political factors that influence mental health and care for those in the mental health and the deinstitutionalization of those who were once put away has become a big ish, uh, part of our political attempts to change the focus of how we care for the mentally ill. Um, your text talks about the Mental Health and Addictions Equi Equitable Act, and you don't have to worry about that extensively, but that's just one of the examples of uh, political and societal attempts to improve care for those who are mentally ill and not just discard them and decide that they aren't part of our society that need to be cared for just as well as those who may be dealing with any other illness whether it be cancer hypertension diabetes that indeed mental illness and addictions need to be focused upon and cared for at Enabling objective number five is going to focus on those kind of disorders that we see commonly in our society. These are ones that I know you all have discussed in, ex in extensive detail in your mental health class. Make sure you pull your books out. Refresh yourself. Remind yourself about these common disorders that you are going to face in society um, or in the community and that the community health nurse has to be aware of and indeed you may need to go uh, do a visit perhaps um, in the home with someone and your thinking is you just need to go and check on that person who is um, maybe elderly you need to review their medications with them be, be sure they understand their medications that they may be taking for hypertension diabetes hyperlipidemia or you may be caring for some elderly person who may have had a hip fracture and you're going to follow up with them uh, post discharge and then you discover that they're living with a, a relative a child or grandchild who may actually have a mental health disorder and you know that as the community health nurse you're going to be responsible to a degree for ensuring that your client though it may be the elderly gentleman or woman that you're caring for who's living with a schizophrenic or depressed or bipolar child or grandchild that they have a certain amount of understanding and how to keep themselves safe from these uh, family members or you may actually need to address some care with that family member to see if they are being managed well with their illness so you have to be mindful of all of these things regardless of whether it is your direct client that you're taking care of or that client's family um, and thus this comprehensive class requires you to have a broad broad knowledge of a variety of different things uh, schizophrenia we're not going to stay on each one of the illnesses extensively um, but we know schizophrenia, schizophrenia um, for lack of a better 
term is the golden cow of illnesses that you're going to see in society. Uh, the most common psychotic disorder. Again, that could be that person that you're seeing in the summer with the multiple layers of clothes on who is not able to um, differentiate between it being winter, it being summer. Their behaviors may be bizarre. Um, their behaviors can include disorganized thinking and speech. Um, and then these clients may also present, unfortunately, uh, dangerously if they're having auditory or command hallucinations, um, auditory hallucinations that are telling them to do things that could be harmful to themselves or someone um, Depression, else. again, the most frequently diagnosed uh, mental health disorder um, and one of the most disabling ones in the United States. We could talk all day about depression, the cost that it has on society, the uh, the taboo to it that no one wants to discuss it, that is hitting. People can be made to feel as though that they are weak if they end up suffering from depression. And so also you have to be very mindful of picking up on those signs and symptoms that may not be so overt for your client. Bipolar disorder also is going to be something that you will have to be mindful of when you find that you're caring for a client that one day may seem extremely sad um, and the next time you go out and visit the house is clean and spotless from top to bottom and they are up for days on end. Anxiety disorders, I suspect many of us may deal with those and of course you guys as students may have some anxiety about tests, but that's different from an actual disorder that can um, be more disabling, preventing you from functioning uh, in day-to-day uh, -day activities and perhaps requiring treatment in patients. Eating disorders often are triggered by in developmental milestones. We do not suffer we do not see this as much in the community setting um, as some of the other things we've already discussed, but it is on the rise and not anymore necessarily confined to the prior populations that we used to see it in, which would be the uh, Caucasian female. It is starting to become uh, more prevalent in different populations. And then we have the ADD and the ADHD, which is extensive and, and I think overdiagnosed, but that's just from my experience as a registered nurse and now family nurse practitioner. So you have to be very mindful of being able to make a determination of what actually is affecting this uh, this child adolescent and we know that even ADHD and ADD can move into adulthood especially if it's never treated. Suicide on the rise make sure that we do not overlook or um, underestimate the suicide potential that may be occurring with a client. We need to know the signs and symptoms of suicide. We need to be aware of what can be some underlying things that are occurring in suicide. We have to, as the community public health nurse, be able to ask that direct question to the client. Are you thinking of hurting yourself? Um, we need to know what to do as a community health nurse if uh, someone comes to us and shares with us that they are concerned about one of our clients perhaps contemplating suicide. Um, there are no times that we should be unable to be direct with the client if there's a concern that they're thinking about them hurting themselves. Anyone who's ever had a previous suicide attempt, uh, suffering with any type of mental illness, substance abuse, all those things can be significant risk factors for someone attempting suicide. The age range a textbook talks about is between uh, 15 and 24. We, I think that's probably good, a good age range to consider, but not to discount that it can be an older population, even as old as the 60-year-old uh, population to 65 and 70-year-old population. Still believed to be um, highest risk upon the with the white male, but other ethnicities 
are on the rise for suicide. And so we do still, again, have to make sure we are careful not to just decide that this is a Asian or African American or Latino client, and therefore they are not at risk for suicide. We just have to be mindful of what the symptoms are and being able to go in and ask that direct question. Um, here's some more information about suicide. Uh, how do you remember the warning signs of suicide? Uh, is that person thinking about it? That means do they have ideation, thoughts of suicide? Are they suffering from substance or, or abuse? Do they not have feel like they have a purpose in life? Uh, are they already suffering with severe anxieties? Are they feeling trapped in their situations? Feel like there's no way out. There's no change for them. No hope for them. Are they hopeless? Are they withdrawn? Do they seem extremely anger? Are they in positions that have uh, come upon them that they know not by their own hand that they bring these circumstances to them, but they have been thrown upon them, making them very angry? Are they doing things that's beyond reckless that anyone would do? Are they driving at 85 miles an hour with a open vodka bottle in their hand, drinking out of it while they are driving uh, 85, 95, 100 miles an hour, and then significant mood changes. Please do not overwhelm yourself with trying to remember every last one of these uh, mnemonics with the is path warm but I think in general when you think back about what you've already learned in your mental health course you will be well prepared to identify and know what those warning signs are of suicide uh, some of the other ones that may not just they may not have talked about already are that that you have already learned is that person who's starting to give things away, who's already seeming to make final plans for their absence, thinking about caring for children or who would care for their children if they um, are a man or a woman who's responsible for someone. Those are things we don't want to forget about. Um, your enabling objective number seven talks about identifying mental illness. You've done this again in your mental health class. You got to ask the direct question, just like we talked about with suicide. You've got to be able to uh, ask that person that direct question. Be mindful that if you ask someone, are you thinking of hurting yourself? Are you depressed? Their immediate answer could be no. But you still want to ask that direct question. You have to observe that person um, and then you have to make sure you know how to use standardized assessment tools and questionnaires. You know, basic cage question for alcohol, things like um, uh, depression screening questionnaires. There are different types that are out there. The PHQ-9, uh, the CD, the uh, CD. 10, I believe it is. So there are a variety of different things that are standardized tools and questionnaires for identifying mental illnesses and mental disorders. Um, managing disorders, of course, there's psychotherapy uh, um, and then there's also psychotherapeutic medications. Uh, we know that there's not necessarily going to be a cure always for mental illnesses. But we know that they're just like with diabetes, the hope of controlling symptoms. Um, psychotherapy, I have been taught in all of my education, is a must with medications, especially if it's not a direct organic issue that's con uh, connected with the mental illness. If it is uh, those social issues that are uh, the cause of the mental illness, we know the psychotherapy is going to have a very significant part of working with benefiting or improving the mental illness with the client. Um, and then oftentimes we also need to be mindful of that in the community, people live in families and in units and that group therapy, family therapy, couples counseling, those kind of things are also going to be important when you're talking about therapy. The um, community health-based initiatives, of course, you guys are needing to be very familiar with these types of things because um, it's what we do. Uh, we know that we have to reduce the disparities that exist in the mental health services. 
make sure that we are unbiased ourselves, evaluate ourselves on how we feel about mental illness um, and, and address our own personal perspectives on mental illness so that we can be prepared to care for that person in the community that may be suffering with the mental illness. Um, And then you have to know the roles that you, the community health nurse, must um, have in the community. Um, and I think that's your naval objective number eight. We've already talked about having that rapport, making those connections, making those relationships with clients. Uh, nothing is ever going to be more important than that, than when you're trying to be effective in providing care for the client in the community. So be sure that you remember you will always act as the educator and the activist. You have to be the coordinator of care. You have to make sure that the care you're providing is appropriate, not only for the client, but also for his family his or her family that is impacted by their mental illness. We have to dispel the myths in the community. I've talked about that already. If you are with a group of folks that sees that gentleman or that man in the middle of the summer with a coat, hat, scarf, gloves on, that you be part of the the solution of them not laughing and joking because on site it can look very funny to someone but you will help them understand clearly this person is suffering with some type of ill possibly this person is suffering with, with some type of mental illness and if their brain could actually operate in a manner that they would realize how uncomfortable or hot they are if they are pouring sweat that they wouldn't choose to stand there with coat, hat, gloves, scarf in 101 degree temperature. Um, we have to give that accurate information. We have to be the advocate for the clients, even those that we may not even work directly with. We have to influence policy and legislation to help uh, those that are in need of care. Um, again, the practitioner and the coordinator, we have to communicate with the consumers and the families. Take action to solve any immediate problems and any long-term.